So in today's topic, we will discuss how RBCs are formed in the bone marrow. From the bone marrow, how does it goes to the circulation, then goes to the right side of the heart, and then to the lungs, gets its oxygen, and then gets back to the right left side of the heart, and then to the different part of the body for oxygen transport. So as you can see, that this is the this area is the bone marrow. Okay, so this is the bone marrow here. So if this is the bone and inside the bone we have the bone marrow. So inside the bone marrow you form the there is a formation of all the hematopoietic stem cells. So I have just focused here how RBCs are formed, but the platelets, the WBC, the RBC, all they are formed inside the bone marrow. So today we will focus only how RBCs are formed. So when the RBCs are formed in the bone marrow, as you can see, this is the hematopoietic stem cells. So the hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow, they form the myeloid progenitor cells. And from the myeloid progenitor cells, the first cell which is formed is the proerythroblast. So whenever the cells are in naive or immature, we call it as a blast cell. So as you can see from the picture, as the cell matures, the size of the cells decreases in size, right? Yes. So when you see, if you look at the proerythroblast, this picture proerythroblast, so you can see this is the cytoplasm of the erythroblast, which is blue because the most blast cells are blue, and this is the nucleus. Yes. The big nucleus because this is the first premature cell of the RBC series. Then yes. you have the basophilic. What is the meaning of basophilic? It is blue. It is, uh, yes. 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 Yeah. It is blue in appearance. It also has a big nucleus. Big nucleus. And polychromatic erythroblast. So in if you look at the poly polychromatic, gradually the color is of the of the, of the cytoplasm is changing. So yes. Yeah, the, the cytoplasm changing and ultimately it will form the red color of the uh, RBC. So here what happens in the polychromatic erythroblast, the cell size is decreasing and the nucleus is also decreasing. In orthochromatic erythroblast, and then again the cell size is decreasing and the nucleus is trying to come out of the out of the cytoplasm out of the cell. So yes. nucleus tries to comes out. And can you tell me that does the RBC and the reticulocyte, does they have the nucleus? No, they don't have the nucleus. Very good. And what does the reticulocyte has? Reticulocytes have. Uh, mm -hmm. They have the. Reticulocytes. R yeah, RRNA they have and they don't have the nucleus. And what is the lifespan of the RBC? It's 120 days. Very good. It has it is the lifespan is the 120 days. So again, just I will just briefly say how the RBCs are formed. First, in the from the hematopoietic progenitor cells, they form the uh, myeloid myeloid progenitor cells. Then they have the proerythroblast, then the basophilic erythroblast, then polychromatic erythroblast, then orthochromatic erythroblast, then they form the reticulocyte, and lastly they form the RBC. Yes. So reticulocytes has rRNA and RBCs have the this is the whole of the RBC. Now the, these two cells are hemoglobinized. These two cells are hemoglobinized here. And you can only see that how do you recognize RBC? Only the center one third area of the RBC is pale. This pale and the whole of this area is hemoglobinized. The whole of this area is hemoglobinized. Okay. Yes. Okay. So after the RBCs are formed in the uh, in the bone marrow, they travel from the they travel from the bone marrow through the circulation. Then the, it goes to the right side of the heart. So okay. if we open the another um, page here, so mm -hmm. what we saw there that from the bone marrow, the RBC is traveling through the circulation. To the circulation into the right side of the heart. Okay. So directly it will go to the let's say let's make a heart here and this is the this is the left side of the heart this is the right side of the heart and then it will go to the veins on the on the right side of the heart and okay. then it will go to the uh, it will go to the through the pulmonary artery it will go to the 
lungs. If you go oh. to the lungs. Mm -hmm. From here, it will go to the lungs for the oxygenation. So inside the lungs, one hemoglobin has a binding site of four binding site of the oxygen. oxygen. One, two, three, and four. So once from the from the right right atrium, from the from the bone marrow to the circulation, then it going to the right atrium, the right atrium to the right ventricle. This is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle, and the pulmonary artery is coming from the right ventricle, and then it is going to the lungs. And from the lungs, the it carries a pure uh, oxygen. oxygen. Yes, to the left atrium through pulmonary vein. Very good. Left atrium through the pulmonary veins. Yes. And then it, from the left atrium, it goes to the left ventricle and then to the aorta. And then it will travel to kidney, brain, different structures of the body. Okay? Yes. Different organs of the body. Okay. So this is how the RBCs is formed in the bone marrow. Okay. The, and uh, in the bone marrow, after they are formed through the circulation, it is coming to the right side of the heart, to the right atrium, and to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery, then it goes to the lungs. And in lungs, the one hemoglobin has four oxygen binding site. So it will bind with the oxygen, carry the oxygen, and from there, it will go to the left side of the heart. Because the pulmonary drain drains to the left side of the heart and then to the left atrium, to the left ventricle, and to the iota, to different parts of the body. Okay? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when RBC, when RBC do not have nucleus, it doesn't have DNA, right? And it doesn't have other organelles, right? So let's say this is an RBC, okay? And it only has central one-third pillar, and the lifespan of the RBC is 120 days, as you said, right? Yes. So yes. Only this area is one third paler. So, and all this area is, all this area is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Okay. So, yeah. when RBC doesn't have nucleus, it doesn't have also other organelles like mitochondria. Yes. So, how does it get its energy from? How does RBC get its energy from? It gets its energy from pyruvate kinase. Very good. From the pyruvate Very good. That is from the glycolytic pathway, right? Pathway, yes. So it gets its energy from the glycolytic pathway. So I'm not going to elaborate in detail about glycolysis, but in glycolytic pathway, there is a, a enzyme called pyruvate kinase. So the glycolytic to the pyruvate kinase, pyruvate kinase, and that's ATP. Yes, it generates ATP and this ATP is utilized by the RBC. Oh. So how the pyruvate kinase, there is an enzyme called the uh, phosphoenol pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate in the glycolytic pathway through this pyruvate kinase enzyme it got, will form pyruvate, will form pyruvate. And during this conversion, this pyruvate kinase enzyme will generate this ATP. And this ATP is utilized by the RBC. Let's say this is a patient. Let's say this is a patient who do not have this enzyme. Do not have this enzyme. Mm -hmm. So he cannot generate ATP. Yes, he cannot generate ATP and the RBC cannot utilize the energy. Okay. So, so RBCs will become rigid, right? They will become yes. very rigid. And they are destroyed by the reticular endothelial cells of the extra that will cause extravascular hemolysis, extravascular hemolysis in the spleen. Okay, mm -hmm. extravascular hemolysis in the spleen. Yes, yes. Okay. So that means when the when the pyruvate kinase enzyme is not there, they cannot generate ATP, mm -hmm. and when they cannot generate ATP, mm -hmm. then they become rigid. Yes, the RBC will become rigid and they are taken up by this spleen and that is called extravascular hemolysis. Very good. They are called extravascular hemolysis because after 120 days, normally also the RBC gets destroyed in the 
spleen. Spleen. It eats it's away. Yes. So, so this is how the normal mechanism, like how the RBCs are formed in the bone marrow through different steps and uh, how the RBCs travels from the bone marrow to the lung to the heart, right side of the heart, then to the lungs, and then to the left side of the heart through the iota to different parts of the body. And uh, the lifespan of RBC is 120 days. They are normally taken after completing its life cycle. They are normally taken off by the uh, reticuloendothelial system like the spleen. Yes. But, but the the in the body, the body always try to utilize, it always recycles. For example, when the RBC are destroyed, they utilize the iron. They recycle that. The spleen recycles the iron. Okay. Okay. And then, um, so the RBCs don't have energy, so it is getting its energy from the glycolytic pathway to the pyruvate kinase. And yeah. then the RBC, if this enzyme is not there, the RBC becomes rigid and they are destroyed in the spleen. That is called the extravascular hemolysis. So I hope this, uh, this short uh, session of the RBC journey helped you. And mm -hmm. uh, I request all my subscribers that, uh, and also people who please like my video and share and uh, comment. You take care and have a great day. Thank you.